can't see much up through here. I hear the brush popping and stuff. Oh, there you go. Jesus. I tried searching for years through multiple outlets of information about the Paul Freeman footage. I could only find bits of information scattered amongst hard to find writings and interviews. To me, the Freeman film had become a blurry video riddled with red flags and a lack of information. Look at that. Finally rolled up on Mike Casey. Mike Casey's been up here a few times and has made some neat connections. What did you, uh, what are you up to? So Michael Freeman, the son of Paul Freeman, he connected me with a lady that has a bunch of history up here uh, named Dar Addington. She is the last living member of Paul Freeman's research team from back in the 90s. Uh, or before. She joined in like 91, I believe, 92. But she spent the day up here with me yesterday, walking around the area of d -Duck Spring. Um, she left me uh, field notes uh, that have been lost for 10 years that she just recently found. That has been a lot of fun to read through. Um, I mean, it's just so much dates, phone numbers, which I, yeah. It's a personal it's log from her uh, from her days. Yeah. This is uh, from the North American Bigfoot Center. They sell this, but it's a, it's. I mean, this is really cleared up. And look at the subject in this. Far from that grainy or weird looking original one we've seen, and they're supposed to come out mm -hmm. with an even clearer version that's sharpened and worked on. It's supposed to provide more information, right? Yes, sir. Man, that's going to be exciting. Oh, this is very exciting, wait. and uh, we are actually camped just up the way from Deduck Springs. Deduck Springs is right over here. So. Deduck Pond is straight down this Deduck road. Deduck Pond, yeah. yeah. Looks left, and then boom. Where'd it go? Would it be that one? Or would it be this one with this tree growing out from it? No, because this one's more front. Mm -hmm. Would be that one. So yeah, does that look like the right angle to you? It looks like it's facing more this way, but perhaps maybe he was. Oh wait, wait, wait! wait. I'm getting it. Look at this. Got it. Okay. Trackway goes this way. Trail goes there. We're on the trail. He's mm -hmm. he's he's slightly off. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna film up the trail. Right there. So see, see how they're to his right slightly. Yep. So they're slightly to his right. He looks up. Now he's looking there. Right. But it doesn't go up as no. as aggressively, does it? And then no. that tree. Uh, All right, so we kind of we kind of yeah. So we're walking up, and that's the rock you initially see in the video when he starts panning around. This is where he's kind of. This a, is where he's looking at prints already, isn't he? Yep. There's dusty footprint that actually like led off of the rock, going down this trail. Was a little bit wider back then. Mm -hmm. Um, and then that's where he pans up over there. All this is that, that all new growth. Yeah. The old stumps there, the tall tree that it was uh, hiding behind there, and the Christmas tree is smack dab right in the middle. Yeah. So this is the large stump in the photo or in the still frame. Mm -hmm. The creature is standing. 
here, hiding behind this tree. And he, he, that's where he peeks out. Where he peeks out. And then this is the Christmas tree uh -huh. where it has the best side shot. Can't see much up there here. I hear the brush popping and stuff. Oh, and there he goes. Tiny bit more. Sorry, man. Thanks for thanks for holding the pose. So, based on finding a number of artifacts from the original video, this is where I think that Paul Freeman stood. We go up this initial trail. He stands here. He shows this watershed. He shows this entire embankment right here, and it's all dirt and rock. He pans back across. He shows footprints going up this trail right here. <laughs> And when he pans across, all this vegetation was not here. The closest tree was that tree, which you can see that little sliver in it at the very bottom. And that sliver is in the video. Same tree. Same tree. He walks up like this and uh, this is where he's showing more footprints now at one point here the video cuts out and starts again he walks up just like this he says I'm starting to hear some popping he walks on this he side walked. this has this is made for like tires for it used to be probably an old road right now it's one road used to be two he stands here this stump right here this stump right here used to be a tree. The leaves are sticking out, kind of obscuring the view with the stump in the initial shots. He looks up, he says, Oh, there you go. The thing, subject walks from out behind this tree, walks across, he repositions up here. Now watch this, you have this trail. You had this tire mark here, this tire trail here, kind of where Mike is. Repositions to film right there. It walks down. He tries to get a better view, better view. At some point, once again, he cuts out. This is the mossy tree where it stood behind. This is what they call the Christmas tree. It's gigantic now. There's a stump it walked behind. It walked this path. Freeman walked up here. Must have took him a minute or two. Um, we're at like five and a half thousand feet. So, you know, there's not a lot of oxygen over here, especially if you're kind of uh, struggling. You could hear how out of breath I am. Uh, Freeman was a lot larger than I am for sure and I'm huffing and puffing a little bit and I'm in shape um, so we're coming up here now he's kind of looking for him at one point the camera cuts come camera comes back on and this is what he's traveling same as today now we have our another artifact here these trees are the ones in the video so there's two stumps in this video. One, two. So there's two stumps right here. We're looking at one right there. He just panned across it. So I'm thinking that's this stump and this stump, okay? The distance looks about right. He pans up right now and shows a second. Right there. Right. Okay. okay, can you move those branches out of the way? Like, I want, look at that. <laughs> one, two, one, two piece, and then behind it, there's another stump. Those are the two stumps mm -hmm. off the film that cuts very distinct. This, it's like a step. So they come across. One one. Up over the hill, look like. The other one must have went up this road. And if you watch the video, it's right about here where he kind of gets him in frame, goes up. Mom or dad pick up the little one. Decades after this was filmed and the technology became available, Doug Hychek 
sharpen this image and it clearly shows what looks like an infant being picked up. Paul Freeman had no idea about this detail because he was looking through a viewfinder while filming. The sharpened footage of this is incredible. Maybe you're piecing together things that aren't there, but it just looks like it's, it's taking its, its time and in, in, in analyzing what Paul Freeman was doing. You know, it walks out, it kind of peaks. Yeah, and so. he was only here for footprints. He was filming down there, he saw the footprints in the dusty dirt, heard the brush popping, and then that's when he looked up. And, and again, if you listen in that video, he's breathing real hard. Yeah. Uh, yeah. With what has been said in the past, I mean, you could drive right up to it. So depending on if he had just driven up, that engine motor's there, that alerts something being like, hey, mm -hmm. young, yeah gotta get back and then paul again I, mean, I, I don't know the time span from when he got out of the truck to where mm -hmm. he found the footprints well the the film footage goes on for a few minutes mm -hmm. before he films this this big fit a lot of people show the uh clipped version where he just walks up oh there he goes it actually goes on a lot longer he's up there he's talking he's he's giving uh, information on the prints he's saying he's saying how there's several of them going up and down and he makes his way up this little trail that we made our way up, huffing and puffing. And you visit these film sites like I visited the Patterson Gimlin film site. It, it, it left me with a lot of new information and an understanding of why things happened the way they did. And approaching here and talking to Mike, who talked to Dar, and they got this whole place. Uh, they got this whole place kind of charted out. Um, it just makes a lot more sense to me now than it ever did. So again, this location, Christmas tree, old tall tree that uh, Christian was standing behind, mm -hmm. lines up right here. Look how thick this area is. Look at this. This stuff, you step in it and it's like, <laughs> it's so deep. It's up to my knees, dude. I guess now I can, I don't know, hide from predator. <laughs> I thought I was going to go in waist deep, dude. Look at this. I saved my phone. Yeah, I didn't want to drop it. I, I, look at that. Oh, that was awful. Dude, my, I went so deep in there so fast. And I kept trying to step and it was like, you're stuck in quicksand. If I didn't, st if I didn't stop, if I didn't try and step, dude, I would have sunk down. That's intense. That was awful. So it's 51 and uh, we're just kind of hanging around camp right now. No campfire, but we do have uh, this little heater going. I am drying my shoes because they are absolutely soaked from stepping into that mud and sinking. And what, what did you, what did you say it was like? A uh, never ending story uh, when a, a, a Treyu, I think yeah, it's a his loses his horse in the swamp of sadness. No, Our don't let the hacks. No. That was me knee deep in oh the mud, in the pond, falling and sinking and sinking. And he's going, don't let the sadness take you. Jonathan lost his horse. <laughs> his horse is in D-Duck Pond. We had to leave. Gone. The sadness took him. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just sitting here and we've heard, what, four elk calls? There it goes. Five. Um, we're just sitting around the campfire here. Trying to keep warm. It's a little chilly up here in the Blue Mountains. But there's elk, which is super cool. Uh, we were in <laughs> uh, El Dorado National Forest, uh, squatching around Stumpy Meadows Reservoir. And uh, we were by the landing and we started hearing that. And I thought it was like a screeching gate to the boat dock or something like that. And everybody kind of wrote it off, but we were in this like bald eagle area and we kept hearing it. And it wasn't until like after that we all kind of put together wait we're hearing an elk and there's nobody up on the ridge where that was it was inaccessible so it had to have been an elk so i wrote to the uh, rangers asking uh about the elk there because i couldn't read up i couldn't read anything on them mm -hmm. and uh the answer that i got was like elk don't go there they go on the other side of the rubicon they go but there are very very rare instances where some elk have made it out there, but that they haven't heard of it in a long, long time, but they wouldn't discount it. So what we heard looking from Bigfoot was that 
elk in an extremely rare place. So that was kind of neat, I guess, in that sense. That is awesome. See, things wander, things walk. Dar Addington told me she saw a moose in Mill Creek. Oh, wow. On the drive up here. Are they common up here yeah. or no? She no. said it was a light-colored moose, and everybody's like, oh, Dar's all seeing a moose. She looked into it. Ticks, if uh, if the moose gets bit by a tick and gets, uh, I mean, they can get light-colored mm-hmm. fur. And she said it was a light-colored moose. Of course, by the oh, time wow. her husband Mark turned around, the moose was gone, but... Things move, things wander. I don't hold it past them. Yeah, things move out of their own. The territory that science tells them to stay in. Yeah, it's not like they're like, no, we're not allowed over here. <laughs> we can't go, don't go over there. there. <laughs> yeah. 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 But yeah, we'll probably hang around camp a little bit more and then drive out and see what the uh, rest of this place holds. Very cool. Very. All right, it is 10.09 p.m. We are in Mike Casey's truck. We're just gonna head on out, do some driving, uh, maybe walk the roads a bit. It was these very roads where Paul Freeman convinced Dr. Meldrum to come and view a footprint trackway that ran for miles. Hundreds of footprints showing data, anatomy, and even dermal ridges convinced Dr. Meldrum of the validity of the Bigfoot phenomenon. Back at camp, um, we drove the road, saw a lot of stuff. Two mountain lions, or probably the same one twice. A bear that went up a tree, a bunch of deer, and uh, we hung around camp for a while, just uh, listening and probably gonna go to bed. Keep an open ear. What do you think, Mike? Pretty crazy. Two open ears. Two open ears. Four. Four open ears. Got backup. Four open ears. Something big is walking around over here. Hear that? That picked up for sure. There's there's something large moving around here. Over here I keep hearing big rustling and I'm still hearing what sounds almost like hooves or knocks. Let's find out what it is. 
Beautiful. It's just all just it's glowing. Huh. That's interesting. Look at that. See all the toes? Might be a bear, but. I mean, you can see to one, two, three, four, a little bit of erosion. This seems to be a uh, byway for the animals. I want to show you what a ruckus these squirrels make and why it's frustrating when you spend 10 to 15 minutes sitting there tracking them down, what's throwing stuff at you and what's making all this noise. Look at that. See that? Now I'll tell you something that's odd. I don't believe in stick structures. That's something you don't see every day. I mean, the amount of noise that those little acorns, look at that. In Idaho, I had a squirrel literally throw, throw them at me. I thought we were friends. Yeah. <laughs> how much came up? I didn't hear much. It was quiet. This the elk went off a few times, and that's it. Dude. Hey, Mike. Does this smell like up dog over here? Mountain. And he's standing here, and he pans this way, and we know that because you see that tree right there. Take a look at this tree. It has this indentation. Now, over the years, there's been some erosion, and this pile has moved up, covering that tree. Well, the only thing that's really stumping me is the stumps. Good one. Oh yeah, these small stumps. This one, huh. and then that one that's right next to the trail. There he went. If you watch the video, you be the judge. I believe there was Sasquatch, that would be Paul Freeman, Somewhere around in this area, walking up the trail. Oh, I start to hear the, I'm hearing brush popping. That's when the Sasquatch here steps out from the trees, walks in front of the Christmas tree, behind the big stump, down into the ravine, down a 15 foot embankment that 
totally invisible from this line of sight on the trail as Paul Freeman was following walks down the ravine embankment completely hidden still and then farther down when Paul Freeman makes it around here you can see the step up stump there's a stump over there that's just it's cut weird and it's got like this step pattern on the top just in front of that stump is where he looks up and you'll see in the video something gets picked up and to me I see a head and a leg like either get picked up or climb up and then back up into the watershed. 58 feet. We'll say 58 and a half. It measures 26 feet. <laughs> cool man, so we are all packed up. Camp is has camp has disappeared. I feel like we mapped it out a whole lot better than even in my mind. I don't know what people in the past have mapped out, what their measurements came out to be, but from our research here at the location, we placed stumps, we placed, we tried to find rocks. The walking back, the reason why it ditched out from that tree and it went the way it did with the infant down the way or somewhere in the ravine, it just makes more sense on why it crossed instead of either staying back, not moving, hiding, or going the opposite way. And retracing all of that was just a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, me, me personally, I'm leaving with a, a great understanding of what happened during that sighting. And, you know, there were a lot of things that I didn't really know. I didn't realize that there was a, a cut in between the scene and that he had walked that distance. I thought that Freeman had just kind of meandered up through uh, past a couple stumps and past a couple trees. No, he walked quite some distance up the trail when he saw it again, and that's when it picks up the infant. And if you don't know what we're talking about where it picks up the infant, well, you got some news coming to you because they are clearing up that film, and there's a clip where you clearly see little legs come up, and it grabs it, and it turns, and that's gonna be like undeniably clear. Mm -hmm. um, it's very exciting when that video gets released. Yeah. I mean, you can see it in his film, but they have slowed it down, they have, they've looped it, it is fascinating to watch. It's so sharp now. Yeah. Um, and so there's, there's a little bit of controversy. Some people say, well, that sharpening is kind of like an AI and it's kind of like an artificial guess at what the film would look like and how it can obscure stuff. Well, that might be true when you're looking at small anatomical details on like the Patterson-Gimlin film, like the, there's a calf flex and stuff like that. But when you're talking about bending over, picking up and legs coming up, that's not going to be accidentally... Uh, modified through AI like that's not what's gonna happen that is clear as day as to what it is and uh, the fact that we got the measurements from where Freeman stood to the film subject to the stump to the mossy tree and all that and mm -hmm. we can even identify some of the trees off to the right on the film including the stumps as well as the stumps further up mm -hmm. um, I mean I hope that provides a lot more clarity for a lot more people and, um, at least some more information for people to look at instead of judging it from not being here spitballing like, it yes you know like, again you gotta you gotta be at the location you gotta see everything you gotta piece things together before you jump to some serious conclusions correct you gotta keep your correct. minds open yeah I have full faith that that was real and that what we what they found farther down the infant I am 100% on board with that I'll tell you what mm -hmm. if if let's just say play devil devil's advocate here and say he faked it it's a really weird way of faking it because he walks up first of all he would have had to fake all those prints then he would have had to cast them take the time to make plaster cast and cast each print going all the way up then he would have had to walk up he sees it he sees his friend in a suit let's just say friend walks up Video's not over. It doesn't just end there and become this infamous video. He still walks way up there. Um, wasn't easy. Wasn't easy for me. Wasn't easy for him. He walks way up there and it pops back up and then it picks up a little one. Think about all of the stuff that he would have had to fake for this one little video. With Michael Freeman's The Freeman Bigfoot Files coming out with a mountain of compiled information, I came to see the actual location. 
in hopes to confirm my skepticism or to make me a believer. Oh, there he goes. Jesus. 